Assalamu alaikum. The Moving Finger is a story written by Edith Wharton. It was published in 1899 in the Romanticism time period. Hence its setting was late 19th century in New York and first person point of view was used for this story or the narrator was or the narration narration of this story was first person before moving towards analysis of the story first we will go through some details about the author and then we will read something about the or we will go through the details about the historical context uh, because this is very very much important uh, whenever you go through any piece of literature before moving towards the analysis of that piece of literature it's important to get to know or to read about the author to get to know about the author's life story and some important characteristics of the author's writings uh, and uh, it's also very much important to Uh, know about the time period in which that work was produced and the socio cultural historical context of the time period because uh, that would uh, enhance your understanding about the uh, that piece of work and that would also help you to come up with a deep analysis of that work and uh, when we will see that uh, who was Edith Wharton we see that she was born uh, in 1862 into an upper class family in New York City Uh, so the details are important that it was the 19th century time period and uh, she belonged to an upper class family and uh, she also belonged to a metropolitan city of uh, a well developed country us Uh, so her upbringing provided her with insights on the upper class and this we also see in the many works that she had produced and uh, in this story also we would see that she had not depicted some other social issues but she depicted the issues that the women face in an upper class her literary works are notable for their vividness satire irony and wit and her characterization is complex she mostly focuses upon the difficulties that the women of her era had to face to find self realization the story is written and set in the late 19th century this was the time period when the first wave of feminism was taking place and uh, when the most impo- important movements were that of women's suffrage which um, where the people struggled for the right to vote for women as well as uh, they tried to find place for women in society and they defined they tried to define the social gender roles and uh, before that a few decades earlier in 1848 uh, there was a seneca falls convention which was also uh, the women movement the time period in which story was set was dark romanticism which was a romantic movement which focuses on tragic macabre themes and on ghosts and demons this we would also see in the present story where we would find many uncanny mysterious elements Wharton published her early work anonymously why because she was a woman and it was unacceptable for a woman of that time to produce any piece of literature and particularly the, those kinds of uh, works where the women objectification is the central theme before moving towards the analysis let's have a look at the uh, summary of the story the focus of the story is mr ralph prensy and his wife they are the major characters when the story starts his first wife uh, was dead so the death of the first mrs grancy that occurred in the beginning of the story and uh, she was being referred to as a parasite by the narrator which um, actually depicts some important characteristics of uh, mrs grancy and that was maybe that she did not have a very positive influence upon mr grancy rather she had a negative influence upon him therefore she was de- being depicted by the narrator as parasite and as insidious character and uh, the narrator of the story was ralph's friend Ralph was uh, Ralph Grancy this is the um, uh, full name of our major character he was deeply affected by the loss of his first wife but he bounced back by marrying again and which stunned all of his friends and why they were being stunned because the woman whom he had married for the second time was the beautiful charming lady a very inspiring character and another major character of this story is second wife of Mr Grancy his friend uh, uh, mr grancy's friend claydon uh, 
paints a realistic portrait of her upon Mr. Grancy's request. And um, this realistic uh, portrait, during the course of painting this portrait, he also fell in love with Mrs. Grancy. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Mrs. Grancy passes away quickly. It was uh, uh, after three years of their marriage that she passed away. Uh, that uh, which resulted in uh, Mr. Grancy being broken up but he he left the place and he returned back after a few years after five years he returned back to his place and uh, when he returned back he was much older than he actually was when he got home he notices the portrait of his wife and he notices notice that his wife appears to be very young uh, therefore, he called for Clayton to make alteration into the portrait in order to make his uh, wife's look to match his appearance. Means to portray his wife older as he was at that time. Clayton did that, but in unwillingly, he did not want to portray. He didn't want to spoil the depiction of the woman in the portrait. So. Mr. And Mrs. Grancy was the inspiration for Clayton's best picture, and uh, which he fell in love with while she was still living. Ralph Grancy acts as though his wife was still living with him, and um, uh, it was uh, Im importantly uh, this actually led to his deterioration, and this led to worsening his physical and his psychological conditions, which led him towards death. This was the main reason because he became so much associated with the portrait of his wife that his psychic condition started worsening because of loneliness and because of his obsession with the painting. Uh, Clayton, he called for Clayton again in order to bring more alteration into the uh, picture, into the portrait of his wife because he wanted that to match his growing age. And when he did that, he depicted uh, in the portrait a dying woman and which actually was a hint to Mr. Grancy that he should also die too. So Mr. Grancy hands a picture over to Clayton before dying and Clayton restores the picture to its previous appearance. He gives the narrator his guardian of events and puts an end to all speculations by saying, but now she belongs to me. So at the very end what happened that uh, Mr. Grancy before dying, he gave it as a gift to Clayton which Clayton really wanted and uh, upon getting the picture of the portrait back he retained its previous appearance giving it the same glow and the beauty that it was in the first attempt of that portrayal and uh, he what he said to narrator he said that now she belongs to me now she had a control upon the painting and thus upon Mrs. Grancy Moving towards characterization, we see Ralph Grancy, the very important character of the story. We are being told in the very beginning uh, that he was stricken with one obstacle after another. As, as we see, uh, the lines I have taken from the text, they are that we had watched him pitted against one stupid obstacle after another, ill health, poverty, misunderstanding, and worst of all, his first wife's soft, insidious egoism. So we see that his first wife was being depicted as insidious. Ill health, poverty and misunderstanding. He was the victim of all these, all kinds of misfortunes. He was controlled by his first wife initially and later he wanted to control his second wife even after her death. When hope enters in the form of his second wife, it was seized by her death only after three years of their marriage. After Mrs. Grancy, second Mrs. Grancy's death, he was removed from his office. And uh, this was the loneliness and isolation which caused his mental, mental health to deteriorate which eventually led him towards his death because he developed an emotional paranormal psychic attachment with the portrait of his wife which actually led him towards death because he initiated an emotional connection uh, with an inanimate object which indicated that he was uh, his psychic condition his the mental condition was worsening and uh, the series of misfortunes also highlights a sense of death and gloom that makes the atmosphere of the story uncanny and mysterious thus mr ralph grancy ended up dying 
after all his misfortunes moving towards the second character that was mrs grancy the second wife of trolls grancy she was not uh, given any name rather she was called as mrs grancy so the name is uh, one's identity and if you are not being given a name it means that you don't have your own identity her identity was that she was the wife of mr ralph grancy this also hints at um, uh, wharton's uh, sense maybe she wanted to indicate the uh, kind of socio cultural conditions prevalent at that time where the women you used not to have any Uh, identity of their own rather they are always being associated or uh, with some male character of uh, their uh, society of their uh, family so in this way we see that she was the mrs grancy who was young beautiful charming and uh, cladon and grancy they both were captivated by her beauty as uh, she was uh, described by the narrator that his wife was the flower so she was depicted as a flower by the narrator and she had a very positive influence upon mr grancy's life so both men cladon who was the friend of mr ral grancy and mr ral grancy who was her husband they both depend upon her for happiness which ironically goes against the norms of the time period where women were thought to be dependent upon men but here ironically we see that both the men they are dependent upon her for their happiness and in her absence they both were lonely and they both long for her existence and for her company uh, the next character is mr cladon who was mr grancy's friend he was a painter by profession and he fell in love with mrs grancy in the course of making her living portrait and from then on he became deceitful to mr grancy and in his it was in his second modification of the painting that he drew a dead woman to hint it to mr grancy that he should also die soon so he got success in it he got success in his in bad motives and got hold of the portrait at the end he altered it to his own desire and proclaimed that now she belongs to me he also wanted to have a control upon her which he gained by with mr grancy's dying moving towards the um, uh, another character who was also mrs grancy the first wife she was also not being given any name and she was uh, associated uh, only with mr grancy and therefore she is called mrs grancy uh, she does not possess a major space in his life and she was being portrayed as insidious and parasite by the narrator of the story uh, grancy was um, uh, we, we have been given indication by the narrator that grancy was trapped and controlled and isolated in his first marriage Uh, maybe mrs grancy 2 felt trapped and isolated with grancy maybe mrs grancy 1 or 2 they too felt trapped and isolated with grancy we have not been given any hint by narrator so we could not say for sure symbolism the portrait is a very important symbol used in the story and what does that symbolize that symbolizes men's obsession with the woman Uh, first mrs grancy and uh, that they want to control her and that they want her to look like according to their desire firstly when mr grancy asked clayton to make a portrait of his wife he wanted her to he wanted him to make a living portrait of his wife and to make her look as beautiful as she was but later after her death with his own growing age he wanted clayton to paint her uh, in order to Uh, make a good match with his own growing age to paint her aged so this was the way that they both whereas clayton did not want to paint her as a aged lady so they both wanted to uh, just paint her the way they wanted to so woman is viewed as an object over here who does not have any living existence so the existence was only and only associated with the man's desires so woman is viewed as an object through this portrait as grancy took ownership of her portrait first grancy took ownership of the, her portrait and afterwards cladon took ownership of ownership of her portrait so that was uh, taking ownership of her portrait was a way of controlling her beyond her grave 
the title the moving finger is very much significant because uh, the, this is the whole story of um, control where everybody wants to control the other and particularly the men both the men they want to have a control upon the woman and uh, hence the title also refers to control authority both in verbal and non verbal form and the moving finger is also uh, a mean of getting things done without uttering something and this is a gesture used for giving directions and in the story's context that also refers to the act of painting as a mean of asserting power control and fulfilling desires you paint somebody the way you want it to and uh, the prevalent themes in the story are that of control ownership loneliness as mr grancy was left alone and he could not move on after his second wife's death Sim similarly mr claydon couldn't move on after mrs grancy's death they both were obsessed and fixated with the portrait uh, the uh, mr grancy was a victim of self deception and escapism could also be seen Uh, the theme of captivity and entrapment infidelity and objectification of women these are very much important and the instances for that could be taken up and could be quoted from the story in order to support your point of view here i have uh, taken some quotes from the story and these would help you out whenever you wanted to make a point you may support your point with these quotes Uh, there so the first quote that i have uh, noted over here was that uh, was about grancy's miserable existence so we see in the very beginning this is uh, occurs in the very beginning of the story where we see that uh, we had watched and pitted against one obstacle after another and uh, so that the reference is towards uh, grancy's miserable existence so next we see uh, that uh, his first the, the narrator made a comparison between his first and his second wife and he referred to his first wife as a parasite and as an insidious character as we say may see over here insidious egoism and um, he uh, described how his second wife had a very positive influence upon mr grancy by saying that uh, mr grancy began to put out new leaves so first he was like a tree who was uh, from which a parasite has been stripped with the uh, death of his first wife and uh, when he married again it was like he began to put out new leaves so and he burst into a flower so that refers to the influence of his second wife upon mr grancy next uh, if you want to write something uh, write about the theme of loneliness in the story you may uh, quote these lines uh, life is a big thing of course a magnificent spectacle but i got so tired of looking at it alone this was said by mr ralph, ralph grancy after the death of his second wife and uh, at another instance the, uh, he also stated uh, that um, and here he was talking about the portrait of his wife he st stated that i began to notice a look of sadness in the picture's eyes and um and the look seemed to say that uh, uh, don't you see that i'm lonely too and uh, he concluded that how she would have hated to be left behind so you may also notice that how loneliness had made that man to uh, how loneliness had actually had a very negative impact upon his mental psychic conditions and he started declining after the death of his second wife his mental condition started worsening and he started uh, developing such kinds of thoughts where he thought that uh, maybe his wife wanted him to accompany her in the other world next the theme of control and entrapment that's very important where grancy wanted to have a control upon his second wife even after her death and at one point he also said you are my prisoner now i shall never lose you and uh, this was what he said to the portrait because with the passage of time the distinction between the portrait and between the real wife that has mingled that has merged and it was uh, actually uh, he made a make believe that uh, he she his wife is a prisoner and he could never lose her in the form of a portrait uh, 
next we may see that uh, the elements of uncanny elements of uncanny and the uh, obsession in lines 240 and 241 where he says but uh, the gradually the distinction where the narrator stated that uh, gradually the distinction between the two and who are two the portrait and the real wife they were effaced and the mere thought of her grew warm as flesh and blood here the narrator is hinting towards the Uh, developing uh, psychic uh, conditions of uh, mr grancy which hinted at his uh, unfortunate death the thought of seeing her portrait possessed me this shows that he was being possessed and fixated with the portrait and for a week we two lived together the strange woman and the strange man the strange woman is a reference towards uh, mrs grancy's portrait so the distinction was intermingled he could not make a distinction between the real woman and the portrait from now on which actually hint at the worsening mental psychic condition of the man uh, next we also see the theme of escapism and loneliness and we may quote these lines that is the picture that stands between us the picture that is dead and not my wife so we may see that uh, he see the things the way he wanted them to escapism self deception elements of uncanny as this feeling grew on me the portrait became like a beautiful mausoleum so he tend to see the portrait sometimes he tend to see the portrait is his wife sometimes he tend to see that it's it's a mausoleum and uh, sometimes he uh, could not uh, make a distinction between the real and the you know, fantasy so his condition started worsening and started leading him towards his own death a uh, theme of infidelity or self deception and for that you may quote these lines where uh, mr grancy was uh, thinking about these things that when cladon painted her uh, the he painted her record just the look she used to lift to mine when i came in so this was the theme of self deception that he next uh, again uh, we could quote these lines for all these self deception infidelity control escapism ownership and uh, these lines hints about the uh, grancy's deterioration and his journey towards death and he says i can guess what it cost him to lay hands on his masterpiece but after all to him it was only a picture lost to me it was my wife regained he uttered these lines uh, at the moment when he asked mr um, clayton to paint his uh, wife uh, it, to made the second alteration into the portrait and he said that to him it was only a picture loss but to me it was my wife regain so that's important escapism self deception elements of uncanny as the narrator at one point stated uh, that heard that he had been at the point of death i understood at once that we had believed him well only because he wished us to so here the narrator concluded and he confessed that uh, we had believed him that he was doing well only because he wanted us to make this believe Uh, this also hint that maybe mr grancy was uh, aware about his own uh, decline but he did not want uh, his friends and the others others to understand it or to be aware of and uh, he wanted to keep this thing hidden therefore he just acted that he was quite well Uh, the narrator uh, remember also remembered mr grancy saying and it was only after mr grancy's death that he uh, thought about all these things that mr grancy at one point also said that i suppose we shall have to go uh, to go half speed after this but we shall not need towing just yet so after his death he concluded that the plural pronoun <coughs> he concluded that the plural pronoun struck me and involuntarily i looked up at mrs grancy's portrait line by line i saw my fear reflected in it it was the face of a woman who knows that her husband is dying she was being portrayed like this that her husband would have a look at her and he would believe that he also needed to go and accompany her and this was done by mr clayden consciously intentionally and willingly so my interpretation is that it was she mrs grancy the second wife of mr grancy the painting the portrait of hers 
the moving fingers of Claydon, which ingrained it in Ralph's mind that he is dying. And he died in order to accompany his dead wife. And he died in order to make that happen. Because his wife wanted him to die, so he died it. He died in order to make that happen. Uh, so that's all students um, I hope uh, you would have understood some important characteristics of the story and um, some important elements which are important for a, a good analysis thank you